This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup So from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro, and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today's show with news from Tesla's annual shareholder meeting, at which the future of Elon Musk's pay deal and where Tesla will be incorporated was voted upon. In the lead-up to the shareholder meeting, tallied early votes seemed to suggest that the proposal to move Tesla's state of incorporation to Texas and to reapprove Elon Musk's $55 billion pay package had split shareholder support. But the day before the meeting, Elon Musk leaked data to suggest that both had overwhelming support. Aside from the legal implications from this, which could attract an SEC investigation, the final provisional vote did indeed fall in Tesla and Elon Musk's favour on all Tesla panned proposals, including the pay and relocation package. Only two shareholder proposals were approved, despite Tesla recommending against them, one on reducing director terms to one year and one on simple majority voting, proposals which were audibly booed by the assembled audience at the meeting. The rest of the shareholder proposals, including ones on collective bargaining rights, anti-discrimination, sustainability reporting and a moratorium on not using deep-sea dredged minerals, were voted against. As the shareholder vote was taking place, Elon Musk was sued by a group of shareholders angry about threats he made in the lead-up to the shareholder meeting if things didn't go his way. Late last week, which is why we didn't include it in last week's show, Rivian unveiled its official refresh to its R1S and R1T electric vehicles. While there's very little in appearance to differentiate the second generation models from previous model years, Rivian says there's been some big changes underneath, with the R1's onboard computer technology, infotainment, power electronics and drivetrain all getting refreshed. For a start, there are new motors built in-house with a choice of dual, tri or quad motor drivetrain, with the spiciest version offering a sprint time of two and a half seconds and nearly 1,200 foot-pounds of torque. Rivian has slashed in-vehicle ECUs, reducing build cost, and customers can now opt for an LFP battery pack on some variants. Pricing starts from just under $70,000 US dollars. Although we would have loved to have made an in-depth drive review, we weren't invited to this particular launch event, so we couldn't. Sorry. It's official. Unless the wheels of diplomacy can turn before July 4th, the European Union will start applying tariffs to Chinese-made EVs coming to the EU for sale. As announced midweek, details of the tariff aren't quite as clear-cut as you might hope, with different automakers charged different tariffs that are dependent on a whole host of different factors, including how individual automakers complied with a nearly year-long EU investigation into subsidies offered by the Chinese government to Chinese automakers that effectively gave them a competitive advantage in the EU marketplace. Tariffs are expected to range between 17% and a whopping 38%, but Tesla, which submitted a request to the EU, may, quote, receive an individually calculated duty rate at the definitive stage, end quote. As always, with developing stories. We'll share more news when we have it. Volkswagen has confirmed this week that it's finalised the design work for its upcoming ID2 electric hatchback. While we don't have official images or videos to share, what you're currently seeing are of the concept car version. Volkswagen's chief designer told Autocar this week that the final design of the ID2 is even better than what you're seeing and leveraged all of the concept car feedback that Volkswagen received. Inside, it's confirmed the interior of the ID2 will be a lot more conventional than some of the other ID badged vehicles, with Volkswagen admitting 
The heavy focus on touchscreens and capacitive buttons, as found in other ID family vehicles, has done some significant damage to the brand. Expect a production intent vehicle reveal in the coming months. For the past few weeks, we've been hearing rumours about Ford's planned changes to its EV dealership programme, and this week those changes were officially announced. To date, dealerships wanting to sell Ford EVs had to become EV certified by investing in DC fast charging infrastructure at their dealerships and by ensuring they sent staff on EV-specific sales and service training, as well as ensuring that EVs for sale were posted online at predetermined set prices. But as of July 1st, Ford will end that program entirely, meaning that Ford's EVs can now be sold by any of Ford's dealerships. While there are some negative effects of this, it does now mean that all Ford dealerships who want to can order and sell EVs. Although I should note, not all dealerships will have on-staff service personnel who will be able to work on them. If you're watching this show, let's be honest, the chances are you're already pretty interested in EVs, so you're also probably aware of which automakers are currently leading in the EV marketplace. But a new survey this week from New Automotive shows troubling results that suggest the way automakers are increasingly use electric and electrified to market hybrids is impacting the general public's impressions of what EVs are. In the survey, which polled respondents in multiple countries, 70% thought the term electrified meant fully battery electric. This goes some way to explain why respondents, when asked what percentage of automakers' new vehicle sales they believed were electric, said that Honda, Toyota and Nissan were all selling high numbers of EVs, when the reality is very, very different. One of the most common criticisms of electric vehicles is the length of time they take to fast charge on a road trip when compared to stopping to fill up with gasoline or diesel. Automakers have made some really impressive improvements to fast charging over the last decade, with the latest generation of 800 volt EVs adding several hours of driving range in 15 to 20 minutes. But this week we learned that Chinese automaker BYD, working alongside battery specialist CATL, is developing a battery that's capable of charging at rates of up to 6C, meaning you could add a few hundred miles of range in less time than it takes to visit the bathroom and grab an unhealthy snack from a nearby convenience store. This kind of charging speed is still a long way from commercialization, but it would certainly shut up the naysayers. For a little while at least. It's official. Germany is home to more EV production than any other European country, and it's second in the world only to China. That's according to official figures from the German Automotive Industry Association, which just published its official 2023 production figures. Last year, 1.27 million plug-in vehicles rolled off production lines in Germany, of which 995,000 were battery electric. Germany, it should be said, has the largest number of automotive production facilities in Europe, so it's no surprise it's also producing the highest number of EVs of any European country. That said, it shows how far other countries are behind. In second place in Europe is Spain, with just over a quarter million EVs made. Pretty much every major automaker in the world has a performance arm of some description, and while it doesn't get a lot of press attention, Alpine is the performance arm of Renault. This week, it unveiled its hot hatch variant of the upcoming Renault 5 EV, the less catchily named Alpine A290. While the name isn't exactly the best we've heard, the specs of the A290 should excite, with substantially more power at the wheels than any of the Renault 5 E-Tech variants. 180 horsepower, 132 kilowatts for the GT and GT Premium, or 220 horsepower, 161 kilowatts for the GT Performance and GTS variants. In its fast guys, the sprint times sit at 6.4 seconds, which isn't that quick for an expensive performance EV, but it's very respectable for a hot hatch designed to be quick on twisties as well as in a straight line. 
Electrical Vertical Takeoff and Landing Company Archer Aviation has been in the news a lot in recent weeks, and this week is no exception as the company has just passed yet another milestone. As explained by the company Midweek, its Midnight eVTOL craft, fresh from receiving its Part 135 certification from the FAA last week, has completed a successful transition flight, hitting a cruising speed in excess of 100 miles per hour. For those who don't know, a transition flight is the term given to the flight pattern an eVTOL craft makes when it lifts off the ground like a helicopter, then rotates its propellers to allow forward flight like a plane, before then rotating its propellers again for a safe vertical landing. Archer Aviation says its development and pre-production flight testing is proceeding entirely as planned. Before we get to those last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV, that pesky RUC and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. As I have reminded you several times, this year there's a US presidential election where former president and convicted felon Donald Trump is hoping to oust current incumbent President Joe Biden from the White House and become president for the second time. And regardless of what you think of the two main candidates, their political opinions or their support of policies that harm the world and its inhabitants, some of the stuff we're hearing flying around about EVs is just... Bizarre. In a recent stump speech in Nevada, Donald Trump went off script and attacked electric vehicles, claiming that electric trucks are two to three times the weight of internal combustion engine ones, complained that there's no charging infrastructure, said that electric boats will sink because of their weight, implied that said electric boats will electrocute those on board in the event of a claimed sinking, and also said that every bridge in the US would require strengthening to deal with the weight of EVs. It's... Amusing in some ways to hear the sheer misinformation being spread, but at the very same time, also very scary, especially since so many people actually believe everything he says on pretty much every subject. And finally, after that previous story, I think it's worth finishing on a positive note and one that does dovetail quite well into FUD busting all of the misinformation out there. Which FUD? Well, the one that suggests nobody wants to buy or drive EVs. A claim that we hear former President Trump state very regularly and one that we see repeated in our comments section and uttered by news outlets aplenty. But new sales data shows that in April this year, global plug-in vehicle sales, that's EVs and plug-in hybrids combined, soared 25% year over year, with 1.2 million new plug-in vehicles hitting the road. Of those 1.2 million, 800,000 were battery electric, up 14% year over year. In the first four months of this year, 4.5 million new vehicles, representing 20% of all vehicles sold globally, were sold with a plug. I don't know about you, but that's some serious progress. And on that note, we are done for today. Before I go though, do make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it's high time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back as usual next week with a roundup show, but in the meantime, be sure to check out other great content on this channel, including including that from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. Oh, and do go and check out Gav's own personal channel where his Austin Allegro Nissan Leaf conversion is finally moving under its own power. Whoop, whoop. Well done, Gav. It looks amazing. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of the week. Kakite. See you next time.